Any game with England starts to feel a little bit better when the trade comes rolling in and that deal to Washington via Baltimore. Look at that. Science, culture and production. That's a lot of fun stuff indeed. In fact, we're just going to go down mercenaries quickly to unlock trade confederation. Extra culture and science from all of my roots would help a lot. Although, looking at my government, there's no way really to put that. So is that really what I want to be prioritizing right now? Yeah, I think it is. We can pop it in instead of naval infrastructure. Then we need to go to monarchy. I need a bigger. I need a better better government. My second industrial zone is now finished as well. The fidget spinner is slowly beginning to get built. The aqueduct is now placed. Bristol is two turns off finishing its and I'm chopping out the deer now in London. We're going to get this finished. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be special. Fantastic. Wonderful. Oh yes, my first archer as well, of course. Let's get these popping out as fast as we can as well. Longbows, ships of the line. All of it must be ours. All of it. Grand Columbia. Hello to you. Hello, hello. You've got a bunch of very weird city-states around you. If you don't mind that, James of St. George is up next to me old engineers, but if we can pick up uh, Imhotep, that would be very handy indeed to get that going. Grants with Pingala means that a workshop in London will give me another two engineering points per turn, and that's before we get the invention card, which makes that even better. Mercenaries, seven science, seven culture. It's a small boost, but a welcome one, a very welcome one. I'll get this gold back from Merchant Confederation. I'm sorry, is that an admiral that gives me a three iron clad? Ho 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 ho. Okay. Okay then. Now now that is something that I could very much get on board with. Now this galley, by the way, is very much on his way to try and three up Gallus who can floor, form a fleet. But I can get a fleet and then also a great admiral who makes an ironclad together. That's quite a combination. That is indeed quite the combination, Amsterdam. Is it not? Amsterdam just looks, it looks very English to me from this angle. Very English indeed. We even now have buttress unlocked. I'm hoping dams are going to be a very effective way for us to push through this game. Now, cartography, extra gold from fishing boats, embarking. We're getting very close to some very fun upgrades now. Some very fun upgrades indeed. Don't mind if I treat myself to another archer whilst I'm at it as well. Admiral is free. Excellent. Make your way through. I need you back in friendly land. As soon as you're available, please. Thank you. Industrialization boosted. I have a second workshop. Give me these engineering points. I need Imhotep. I need all of the wonderful people plus four, plus five. It's beginning. It's beginning. Out of curiosity, no other reason. Netherlands, are you allied to anyone at the moment? No. No, you're not. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Let me just convert one of my great admirals to an ironclad with 70 melee strength. Oh, well, well, it would be foolish to take on the Dutch with but a single boat, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Don't you think? No. <laughs> ah, it is treacherous aggression. I am treacherous. All of these things are True. Wabam. Oh, yes. It's, it's just the strongest of all of the admirals for that reason. I'm skipping over Caravel. I'm just going straight to Ironclad. And then we can get Santa Cruz, who will form that into an armada if I wanted to. That's an amazing combo. I love I love rushing admirals. It's so much fun. There's Vesuvius. Antiquity sites give extra culture and artifacts give extra culture and tourism. That's fun. So much fun land. I want it all. Is that Kilwa being built over there? Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. You build that. Don't don't worry about keeping that one. Just, just keep building. It. I'm sure it's fine. I just realized Portugal have settled over into Brazil. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, in case you were wondering, I also managed to bring France, Norway, Carthage, and Sweden into this war. So it's not just me. Not just me. Oh, this is a cool wonder. Floodplains yield plus one culture for any civilization that owns these. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is a wonder I want. Is how much the loyalty down here. It's okay. Right. We have a new settling spot. We need to go and grab that as soon as we can. Settlers, away. This one's going to claim the least. Feared. I'll send one down south as well. We're starting to work on some quadrimes as well. Doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things and they're all angry. Cree. I would love it if we could get an alliance with Cree. That would reveal pretty much all of the map in the top left hand corner. Amsterdam is throwing walls up really quickly. There's a chance we can do this without them actually having time. If they get ancient walls up, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it would be a little bit annoying. Oh, they used the galleys to attack my ironclad. That's bold. I do sort of respect that. Oh, there's my exploration 
Operation Galley, killed by a caravel. The barbs are not messing around. So I have friendship with Carthage. Now she is at war with Benevolence. I could in theory get a military alliance and the good thing about going allied with Dido is that her land is way away from anything that I could possibly want. I'm thinking people like Portugal. <sighs> I mean Portugal and England are very old allies but I might need their land. I might need to borrow it at some point. I don't really want to make an alliance with them. I'm going to be very very sparing with my alliances. Rome on the other hand. Now Rome I could get all aboard with. So make an alliance with you. Not going to go anywhere near you. I don't actually know if we're going to have enough combat power to take Amsterdam. So I'm just releasing my galley to make the finishing blow just in case. No, Amsterdam is available and conquerable and we have stolen the Great Lighthouse, which is the main reason I wanted this city. All of my naval units have another plus one movement now. Amazing. It's even loyal. It's like they wanted to be part of my empire. That's what I'm saying. And the Ironclad is giving it ridiculous strength as well. So I don't think we've got to worry about the Dutch taking the city back. Now, they are down the river. They have put their wonderful polders down this river. I might respect Tilburg and not fight to claim it anymore. Now that I've got access to the channel and I'm basically controlling it, I feel a little better about this. But we'll see how we go. You know, I can't guarantee my good behavior. That's that's impossible for me to do. Where's Maritime Industries? Here we go. 100% production on quadrooms. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the most wonderful thing that an Englishman can give any game. It's a countryside pub. Now, the pub is quite a unique improvement, well, quite literally, in the sense that it gets better the more stuff you put around it. Every pub you put down gives to culture. After that point, the improvements you have around the pub make it better. So for every two lumber mills, I get one production. For every two farms, I get one food. For every two mines, I get one gold. So you kind of want to put them in the middle of things. Two lumber mills, one extra production. However, that then gets better. Once I've got civil engineering, we get one production from each lumber mill. Once we get to enlightenment, we get the extra food. Industrialization gives extra gold. So we, there are things that improve these. You can't put a pub next to another pub. Of course you can't. Look how beautiful that model is. Oh, it's wonderful. I wish all English pubs had like manicured gardens like this. This is not the average UK pub, but I'm just going to put them everywhere. This is going to be basically the main thing that I do in my empire from this point onwards. It's just pure pub maintenance. We may, by the way, generate a bit of an emergency here. I might just go onto the market and spend a little bit of my hard-earned gold on some Diplo favor if there's some cheaply. This isn't exploiting it. This is basically making sure that I can actually vote down an emergency if I needed to. So we'll just claim about 40. That'll give me some votes in the inevitable situation that the Dutch vote for an emergency. That just gives me a tiny bit more weight. The world's not going to like that, by the way. But we're the English. We're not supposed to be liked by the world. We're supposed to rule the waves. We're supposed to annoy everyone everywhere. Oh, look. Are those marbles in your land? Better look after them. There is another city here. Yes, there's a polder, which makes this a little bit more annoying. You're going to give me the opportunity to take Dutch cities. I'm going to take Dutch cities, you know? It's just what I do. This is just how I play. I didn't actually pillage that lighthouse. Who pillaged the lighthouse? Oh, the Dutch. Uh, sorry, the, the Phoenicians. Okay, I love I love your attitude, but I very much was in control of that city and I was going to be. So I would have preferred if you didn't pillage that, but never mind. Here is the military emergency, but I have three votes rather than one. Will it make a difference? Will enough of my allies in the world vote against this emergency to get it sent away? Look at that. Oh, if I hadn't have bought those votes, I would also be at war with France. France looking to get revenge. Sweden coming to my aid with that last vote. The world watches the Netherlands burn and it stays silent. That's uh, not a problem for me. Well, I uh, better pillage all of these trade routes then. Clearly the world wants me to do this. That's the message that I'm getting. One problem I'm finding is that the Dutch are quite a powerful naval sieve. Because of that, they have this annoying habit of pillaging all of my trade routes. Please don't do that. I would rather you did not do that. Lake Redba. Two gold for each unique copy of a luxury that they own. That's the sort of thing that builds up quite nicely. I realize Sweden has actually provided Feed the World to these cities and I have shrines and temples. So Amsterdam is going to be a really nice city to grow. Production discount on building things as well as city centers. This could give me the opportunity to build a huge navy here. Oh yeah, it worked. Oh, campuses. I haven't built any campuses yet. Interesting. Very interesting. Right, a trade route to Portugal. I'm just trying to avoid trading through the Dutch lands here because all of my stuff is being killed quite quickly. We can now get into the sea, by the way. Yay! America has denounced me for England's wars overseas. Again, that doesn't sound very realistic at all. Every time I try and send a galley down towards Africa, it gets killed immediately. It is not good. Look at how many troops I'm pumping out, though. I've got warriors everywhere. We have archers everywhere. Quadrimes everywhere. These base units are going to make up a 
huge upgradable army that I definitely am not going to invade France with because that's absolutely not what England would do. No, we've always had very positive and very sensible relations with the French all the way through. Uh, speaking of, don't mind if I just crank out a few warriors on top of all this. No reason for that at all. None at all. Utrecht, you are mine as well. Oh, this is very, very good. Perfect royal English land. Always has been. With Colossus and Lighthouse. That gives me access to two more trade routes now. Divine right. Let's get monarchy. So, bit of a sweeping change in my government right now. Republican Legacy, Trade Confederation. Both of those are handy cards. I want to keep them both. Also going to keep right now my serfdom. As well as not professional army right now. We're not quite ready to go there. I'll go veterancy. We are still producing a lot of lighthouses. Speaking of, it says minus 14 for Lysfjord right now. Don't worry about that. We'll be able to do something. Magnus, get involved. It says minus two now. Buy the fish, immediately chop the fish out, and we're loyal. Look at that. People doubted me. People doubted me, but they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have. And look, oh, two science and culture just by working this towel. Any boat built in this city gets a free promotion. Well worth remembering. Former fleet out of an ironclad. Oh, yes. That is a strong, strong unit. Very strong. You love to see it. Where do we want to go now? Where do we want to go now? I'm friends with Portugal. I mean, Portugal's lands are quite tempting. If only there was an old traditional foe. An old foe of England that we could find and come back to with good lands. Breakaway provinces. Lush, Territ, hmm. Don't know. We'll have to think about that. So look and see who France is unhappy with. Spain. Hmm. Can I join in with your war? Yes. You'll even give me a gold for it. Well, go on then. England and Spain at war with France. What is going on in this game, eh? So crazy. I can't get Phoenicia involved. But again, we're just going to do the usual thing and just see out of everybody that will talk to me still, which is increasingly fewer and fewer people. Who wants to get involved? Like Portugal. Yeah, Portugal wants to get involved. Excellent. This is such a funny little army at the moment. I haven't really upgraded it. So I have my ironclad fleet that can just rock in and damage like crazy. Everyone else is kind of an army of clubs and wooden boats. So it's a little bit mismatched, but we'll get together soon and we'll do something fun. As soon as I've unlocked the upgrade card, which isn't too far away now. Yeah, the world doesn't like me very much now, but I have nine cities, so I don't really mind. Managed to make peace with the Dutch, by the way, so there's one less war going on now. I actually managed to already get the Dutch to be fighting the French. Whoopsie, did I do that? I think I might have done. Oh, I'm such a cheeky scamp. Look at me. Oh, never may it be said that I didn't improve Amsterdam on one of the peninsulas I have built. Mausoleum with two charges of Imhotep. Normally I would use only one charge, however, someone else was building mausoleum I wanted to rush it through because one science one faith and one culture on all of Amsterdam's tiles well this makes it into quite the scientific perfection in fact speaking of Plymouth is now loyal which means I'm going to do a little bit of shenanigans I'm going to move Pingala across to Amsterdam where you will be based with mausoleum and then I'm going to move Magnus over to London I'm going to turn London back into a settler spamming area of the map oh are you supposed to be building wonders that's a shame Shame. That is truly a shame. Santa Cruz, an armada out of a military naval unit. Oh, lovely. Well, we'll save you just for now, because in the meantime, my ironclad is just going to bash through, seize the city, and we have another little piece of Brittany. You can't spell Brittany without Britain. Military engineering. If I haven't got NITA, I'm going to be very disappointed. I don't think I do, by the way. Just putting it out there. Craftsman, extra industrial zone capacity. Brilliant Republican legacy is doing me good. Trade Confederation is doing me good. Serfdom is doing me okay. We'll keep all that for now. I just need a bigger government. A much bigger government. Let's unlock square rigging and just hope that there's NITA somewhere. To be honest, I really don't know if there is. There's only seven results that I know about right now. Those two, actually all those are in Iberia. <laughs> the Dutch clearly have some. Amar has some. Interesting. Portugal actually hasn't dug any of it up yet. So who has? Where is NITA? Well, really difficult to get. That is frustrating. Ship of the Lion is not going to be very handy at all. It needs 20 NITA to upgrade. Ah, okay. Okay, right. As a priority, we are going to go and explore the world now and see if we can find NITA. That is our huge priority now. Actually, Armani might be weirdly useful in this particular instance. Now, if Armar improves this NITA, I will now receive it. If I can suzerain Armar, like so, I get double the amount. 
send a builder over quickly to Armar. Let's do it. So France has pike and shot. Yeah, it's a little bit worrying. Just fortifying my units. We can do something fun with them. I just need to make sure that we've got enough gold and nutrients to upgrade them. Very good diet. A pure sieve wonder. We are in the Renaissance. Monumentality is always exciting, but there's only one thing that England can do, and that's Hicksunk Dracones. Settling on different continents gives me three population, more movement for naval and embarked units. Yes, I know we could get more gold from a former coinage. Yes, I know we could buy settlers cheaper, but intelligent, crazy settling is what we are about. My gold and faith, by the way, are going on great people and upgrades to troops. Let's pop professional army in now. And the settler card, which I am going to get quite a lot of usage out of instead of Republican legacy, I think. Time for a well-needed upgrade though. It's a longbowman. It's like a crossbow, but a lot better. And I've already got quite a few of them ready to pop across to France. You didn't know, in history, English longbows were used to great effect against the French on many occasions. Were they the perfect fighting troop? No, not at all. But did they have success? Oh yeah, they did. My pub-based terraforming continues, by the way. This is kind of a bit of a mission I have right now. There's no need to put this many pubs down. It is not an optimal move, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to put as many pubs down in my nation as physically possible. If I can produce a nation that is just one solid pub everywhere, that would be quite amusing and I would like that. Where's the wonder what's through the Bermuda Triangle here? Let's go through. It's the Congo. The Congo are through the Bermuda Triangle. Honored to meet you. Here we are. Actually, this is not bad. If there is a nice nighter location down here, that might be a really good place to go and get some. Because at the moment, the AI I know, not selling. The Sand Sea. Foreign trade routes that pass through your cities provide one culture for every civilization. Oh, there's some really good wonders on this map. Grand Colombia has come at me. Interesting. And the Aztec. Well, I wonder what forces they're going to be sending. This could be a very random war. Or we could rock up with a huge Aztec frigate fleet. And, you know, that could be a problem. I'm just seeing how much of France I can now scout from the coast. The Ironclad is useful, but I think I'm going to have to move my units in at some point. Ren. Okay, my longbow are tough, but they're not particularly tough against cities. So let me just move the unit in just so that I've got a little bit more combat strength. I think we should come back with weapons or we just take this little slice of Brittany and then just assume that that's the only thing we want to take from France right now. I'm about to take a bit of a tech boost into square rigging and I don't particularly need anything right now from France. It was mainly just I had the units here and I wanted to do something funny. Diplomatic service. I think that I will get approximately zero Vissel banking because I'm currently not trading with any of my allies but maybe maybe getting a couple of allies might be something useful to do in the longer run. Uh, for now I think we'll just focus on the gold of the roots. Oh yeah these are looking pretty good. Ottawa send as many roots to Ottawa as we can. This is a really really lovely city to trade with. 253 gold per turn, extra science, extra culture, bit of food and production as well. Lovely. Here we go. Armar is now improving automatically its NITA. That's cool. That means we're going to get some NITA in per turn, which means we can afford some square rigging. We're going to have to throw in cards in order to make sure that we take the maximum amount of NITA onto this, but I might actually get my unique unit. I might do it. This, it's good. I was genuinely concerned that we wouldn't at any point be able to use our unique unit. Alas. Game cannot stop us, even if it wants to. Longbows attacking the units here. So we can drive them back before I upgrade all of my units in retaliation. Mana arms? Mm, probably bring at least one of those into combat. No, the French ran back. They saw the English longbows and they thought, no, we can't take that on. Terrible. Get back to France. So I've determined that it's the barbarian clans causing the issue right now. When the barbarians are forming city-states, they are failing and leaving these sort of generically unconquered cities behind. It's just one of those things. There's enough map to go around. We're doing fine. Look, I think this is, is this Cuba? With diamonds and turtles and reefs and over here in the Florida area there's tobacco and turtles. So there's some really, really good settling spots and my settlers are on the way to English over everything. Oh yes, look at all these settlers. London is now beginning to pump them out. A lot of other cities are doing the same thing. Four night per turn. There you go. Two from Mama being doubled by four an investor. Amazing. Nice easy peace deal with France. England and France will always be at peace as long as you respect the rule of Brittany. At that point th then we can be friends. Now my 
vast fleet, my vast longbow army, conveniently make yourselves available on the other side of my continent, please. I don't know what's giving me this impression, but I just feel like somewhere, someone is throwing a large amount of tea in a harbor, and I can't stand for that. Oh yeah, and I'm still putting pubs down everywhere. Every time I can put a pub down, there is a pub going down. I want to see how many we can make in this game. Hopefully a few. Portugal, you're being very annoying and settling all around the Caribbean. It's like, it's exactly what they do. Military emergency? Oh, whoops. That's the other one. That might go through, you know? I forgot to stockpile on Diplo favor. Yes, that did go through. Who joined in on it? Sweden and the Dutch. Oh, dear. That's a very bad time for you. Very bad time for you to be declaring war on me. So Sweden is this gray color. They're losing a bunch of cities to loyalty on my coast. And then the Dutch are just sort of chilling around my borders as well. Okay. I'm going to send some longbows to the border. That should be enough to keep everyone just about happy. Anyway, Amsterdam, Utrecht, these are very much happier cities in my land now. Don't worry about taking them back, Netherlands. They're mine. This, though, on the other hand, now that Swedish ship is going to do a lot of damage to me if I'm not careful. Look how fast these ships of the line are. I've also been told in the comments to make sure that the combat animation is turned on when ships of the line go into combat. So let's have a quick look and see. Yeah, okay, that was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Next turn, I will pop in the upgrade card. We'll get a bunch of them promoted. I could send them down and uh, physically take over these cities from Sweden, but I think I'll let loyalty do the work for me down there. I'm just leaving all of my boats in the Irish Channel. We're getting ready to upgrade. Next turn. I was like this. It says that you can't settle, but you can because it's totally separated by the sea. Bam. Mesoamerica, a three unit, access to gems and turtles. Oh, it's a wonderful city. Now all I need to upgrade is red coats. Oh, red coats. I love them so much. Come on, Aleppo. Please fall to my ironclad. I need to turn combat animations off because, my lord, these take forever. It needs to be a button. I, like, turn combat animations on, but only when ships of the line are being used. That's, that's the very specific criteria I need right now. Okay, settlers are really important, but for a second, they are not the most important. I need retinues, craftsmen, professional army, serfdom, all of that good stuff. In fact, Trade Confederation, I'm going to take out briefly to put Republican Legacy in just so that all of my cities are happy. You end up getting more resource that way, more yields, as long as you're getting the 10% boost from everything. With a couple of luxuries, we should be doing just that. Wonderful. And now ship of the line. Done. And done. Aleppo joins me. This just puts more pressure on Portugal. What you gonna do about all this loyalty, eh? What you gonna do? There'll be some amazing campuses around here when we're done as well. I'm now even starting to build alongside all of my pubs some campuses. Not a huge amount, but enough to keep the science ticking over. I still am pretty close to being the worst in tech on this map. I am 16 techs behind Canada, 11 techs behind America, but no matter. We don't worry about such odds, no. We fight through. We continue. Hello, Florida. My first settlement on North America. It's looking wonderful. Start improving it directly and right away. This is why Hicksonk Draconas was such a good idea, in my opinion. Just immediately get the cities working at full strength as fast as we can. Grand Colombia and the Aztec both just backed down, by the way. Whatever war agenda they had, clearly they got bored of it. Sorry, America, I'm just going to be claiming more and more of your land. Again, I'm sure you don't mind. All it is is just me putting pubs down. Endless pubs. That is Florida claimed once and for all. Oh, America. America. You didn't think that I'd be gone for long, did you? No, no, no. I'll be back. But you cannot win by words, you will not win with weapons. I mean, that seems fair, except from the fact that I have absolutely beasting strong ships of the line. Well, America does look at least like it has got all of its Minutemen up and running, lots of musket everywhere, but these ships of the line at the moment, well, they're not even promoted. They're not even promoted. They are just dealing regular damage to Washington. Mwah, ah, ah, ah. Hello, America. Here's a fully armed battalion. Italian. What are you going to do about it? We settle too close. Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. We're at war. What What part of I respect you diplomatically do you think? What? Also, Norway were lurking around with a lot of boats around Amsterdam. They were clearly up for it. And now they've seen the ships of the line wreck into America. And they very much have thought against that plan. Like even America is now pulling its troops away from the coast. It's like, oh no, the British are here. Fall back. Fall back, everyone. Bully for who? That's right, for me. Ah, 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 ah. 
Burn, Washington, burn. How's this independence doing for you, eh? All alone, across the sea. Actually, some pil pillage? Pillage. Oh, also, I have reinforcements. Did I mention I have reinforcements? I have a lot of reinforcements on the way. Ha 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 ha. Mercantilism. More boats. More boats. Excellent. Speaking of, I'm just going to take off the upgrade cards for a little bit. Let's wind everything back up. Triangular trade. Quite like that. I really want to put trade confederation back in as well. Um, Republican legacy is not doing much for me at the moment. So we'll pop both of those in. And veterancy. Back in you go. A handy, handy card. Washington takes yet another hit. It is now on zero garrison health, which means my man at arms can navally invade. And bam, Washington is back in English hands. And look at all of these boosts. Amazing. Loyalty? What? Why don't they want to be part of my land? What's going on here? Oh, don't know about that. Speaking of people who don't really want to be English, here is the city on Highland. <laughs> I thought I probably should settle over the UK, like sooner rather than later. I've been very much putting this off. Okay, loyalty is a bit of a sticking point here. We take Cincinnati, if we take Baltimore, both of those will help a lot, but I need more. I need more visibility, more information about what's happening here. Ships of the line, we're all next to each other, gaining a lot of bonus combat strength, all attacking in unison. Excellent. Cincinnati should fall next turn. I've actually managed to land my longbow as well. The British truly are here. Oh, did I mention as well? We've now taken Atamananke. That is an amazing pickup for me because all of the marshes around my land are now giving me science. So we've just gained about 40 science per turn, I reckon. Roundabouts? I mean, look at all these towers up in Liverpool as well. Oh yes, this is wonderful. It's a good time to be playing Vicky. Well, America are charging back. They're attacking with the full force of patriotism and NFL. But unfortunately, my longbows, they cannot be defeated as the Netherlands are going to find out very soon. You want to take your land back, do you? No, no, no. Ursa disapproves of this as a concept. Longbow says, huzzah! 10 population Boston. That could be one of the reasons why I have no loyalty in this area. No matter. Lincoln, I will take Boston. I promise you that much. Oh, just leveling up my ships of the line, taking Cincinnati. A yoink. Thank you. Now immediately attacking Baltimore. Well, who'd have guessed it? My weak, unupgraded units are being routed by America's gunpowder units. Uh, and well, <laughs> maybe we should uh, retreat those to the sea up until the point that I have unlocked my gunpowder upgrades, which to be honest is not too far away now. Just picking up printing and then military science is just after that. So that's okay. Yep. In the sea, everyone. Get in the sea. You don't mind if I just come into your borders, Canada? I definitely am not going to be shooting America. No, no, no. I'd never do that. Speaking of, let's start shooting America. <laughs> okay, Baltimore has been hit down to size as well. We'll take it. Ottawa, though, might give me a slight issue because I don't think the loyalty is going to be any easier with this city. But uh, minus 17, minus 8. Yeah. Turns out America doesn't want to be British. I, I did very strange. Can anyone truly understand why? I don't know. If I start chopping out a little bit of population, though, that will help a tiny bit. No, it doesn't help at all. It might do soon, though. We're almost on the loyalty cap there. Portugal is now losing all of their cities as well. Oh, what a shame. What a shame this is. Join me. Join me. Right, now the ships of the line can just spend a couple of turns destroying America's army. Anyone that wants to get close to the shore, you're being pelted. Kill a unit with a knight. I've yet to unlock knights. Let's just do that quickly. As soon as I do, we'll be able to pray a knight in. Ah, I say pray a knight in. I totally keep forgetting to get Grandmaster's Chapel. We'll do that in a second. Get myself a knight kill. That should give us the red coats as soon as we can get them, which is wonderful. I, I'm unfortunately, Renaissance wars are being built here. I kind of want to snip the cities a little bit just before this gets to be a problem. Hang on. Okay, the longbow can shoot over. Just do a little bit of damage to Boston and then they won't build Renaissance walls. That's the idea. Do you see this? It's, it's this is what it's giving away. Oop, the Renaissance walls are being built. These little hats that are being put on the walls. Red coats with siege weaponry. We can just take the cities. There won't be a problem. One damage. So all you need, they can only build them in a city that has absolutely full walls. So there you go. Pedro, Brazil, honored to meet you. I think I'm going to let my alliance with Portugal expire. I just feel like Portugal has got too much stuff in the immediate area. I love this. I love this. America can't help themselves. They keep just throwing the occasional unit at me. Civil engineering doesn't 
does a couple of things. Firstly, it means that I've now got Victor I can throw into Baltimore and just try and keep these cities for a little longer. I don't need them for very long, just a little longer. Chopping out food. My golden age, yeah, look at that. Cincinnati is now loyal. Baltimore will get there. I chop out enough fish. There's always enough fish to chop if you look for it. But it means that my farms now have more adjacency, which is cool. And my pubs, most important bit, the pubs. Now get an extra production for every adjacent lumber mill. So it's now just a one for one ratio, which is really quite useful. There you go, I've bought a knight. All I need is a single kill with this knight. I'm gonna leave that curacao actually around, just in case they want to sacrifice themselves. Philadelphia, 17 pop. Oh, ho, ho, that would be a pickup. As you can see, I'm just out of range, which is a little frustrating, but the red coats are, are, are near. They're on the way now. Oh, I realize I'm now at war with Portugal. When did that happen? Whoa, 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 whoa. They must have declared war on somebody that I was allied to. Oh no, I think the Dutch declared war on the Romans, and I think the alliance is all just created a new world war shortly after that. Okay, don't worry about it. It's fine. We've got cities like Birmingham finishing Royal Navy dockyards, which in turn provide more ships of the line, which in turn increase my combat strength to like 7 million. This city has been taken. Bring yourself back there. Ships of the line all gather around. Fire and destroy these Portuguese now. Your unique boat is strong, but mine is stronger. I'm deliberately selling my iron so I can keep it below 20 because I can still build warriors and they're taking one turn at the moment. Now, the more warriors I make, the more red coats I'll have when I do this vast upgrading. Norway is going to start settling these islands for me. This is kind of something that was going to happen because I've just been too slow on it, but that's okay. I really don't mind. I'm just going to end up stealing all of the cities and oh, I've still got this trade route bug. There is a trade route bug with the game at the moment. Sometimes you just, you can't refresh the trade routes that are available to you, no matter if you reload the game or if you move them around. The only thing that seems to refresh it sometimes is settling a city. So that's what we're going to try and do, settle a city, but it, it doesn't always work. Nothing I can do to keep Baltimore. So we're going to let that one flip and just keep Cincinnati safe instead. I've got enough troops back to retake the city as soon as I can. It's not a problem. It's just more annoying. Our routes seem to have updated themselves now. I think it's because I just lost Baltimore. So the game has reset the calculations, but I don't mind how it happens as long as it does it every now and then. Give me more trade routes, please. Thank you. I keep getting pillaged by Portugal. Turns out Portugal has a massive navy, who would have thought? But I'm building them faster than Portugal can kill them. So I don't mind. One attack, two attacks and three attacks. Baltimore's taken again. Don't worry about it. It'll flip backwards and forwards several hundred times. We'll all just get used to it together. Mapuche. I believe that's the last person on the map it is. I would like all of your luxuries. Don't worry. I'm the English. I'm friendly to all people on different continents. Just give me all your resources and I'm sure everything will be fine. New voting and another opportunity to produce more units. This could not be any better for me. Which one went past last time? Was it trade? Religion. Let's see if the world wants to go in a similar direction. I like half price units. These are really fun. As I say, I've got the production. The means of production. I know that AI can build more troops and they can fight against me, but what would you rather? All of the tools in your locker? I mean, you can do things better than the AI. That's the main thing to remember. Oh, the Caribbean is sort of secure now. Managed to kick Portugal out of this. Tell you what, this war with America is sort of a little bit apt. America's not winning, but they are grinding me down and I'm running out of resources in order to just keep funneling troops forever and ever and ever into this field of combat. So they're sort of winning just purely by grinding me down, which is kind of their whole point. I'm just moving this knight over. If I can keep this pike and shot in and around the area, I can kill with the knight. Kind of what I'm hoping happens, that'll shave a few turns off military science and that'll help me to get my red coats and then everything will be happy and smiley and wonderful. America really want peace. They really do want peace. Oh, yes, we lured them out. I left a builder specifically on the coast to try and lure these units out. All I need, all I need from this is the knight to get a single kill. Sure, we can engineer a situation like this. I'm sure we can. How much damage does the knight do against all of these troops? A little bit of a kick. So we need to delicately, very delicately now, just attack units to leave them on almost no health. And I've done it already. There's the kill with the knight. Here is military science. I've saved up a grand total of 32 nighter. We have both professional army and retinues in. And of course, I cannot upgrade because I realize I have not got musketmen. Oh, you gotta love these anticlimaxes, don't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> never mind. Fine, we'll just we'll just keep all of these troops around for now. This gives my ship of the line a bit of an excuse to just blow up some troops. So we'll do that for a bit. Torre de Pania, this is an amazing wonder. Any city that owns at least one of these tiles may build one extra district than the population would normally allow. Oh, that's the sort of thing you love to see. Well, there goes the knight. Goodbye. <laughs> you did everything I needed you to. And quite literally, no more. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennest, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, The Nickerman, Bob Loblaw, Davalex, Geography Teacher. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!